With there being 32 NFL teams, there are bound to be different teams in different stages of competing. Some, like the Carolina Panthers, are clearly rebuilding, while others, like the Kansas City Chiefs, are competing for a Super Bowl year in and year out. And in today's video, we're going to discuss what scares me with four NFL teams that, in their minds, are seriously competing and are envisioning themselves hoisting the Lombardi Trophy on Super Bowl Sunday. I know there's going to be jokes from people about a certain team that hasn't been to the NFC Championship game since 1995, but Dallas enters each and every game thinking they are on their way to the Super Bowl too. But Dallas will not be the only team discussed in today's video, and there is a lot to dive into with each of the four teams we are going to break down. And before we get started, I want to take a second to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, Game Blazers. Game Blazers is an online game that has taken fantasy football to the next level by combining traditional fantasy football with video game mechanics. Game Blazers is free to play and you are given 12 free athlete items to start. And you can earn XP to unlock additional free items and boosts through the free GB Pass. Which may be similar to a battle pass in one of your favorite video games, and just like fantasy football, you draft your own salary cap team to compete in contests each week. But unlike traditional fantasy football, you choose from a roster of athlete items you own. Contests can be free entries where you earn XP and there's no pressure to spend a dime. You can make your own contests, play in other community contests, or play in a Game Blazer official contest. And if you sign up for Game Blazers using the link in the description or the pinned comment, you can play in my free to join $1,000 total prize pool. And remember, Game Blazers is not sports betting, it is strictly fantasy football. So go sign up for Game Blazers, enter my free to join $1,000 total prize contest using the link in the description or the pinned comment. And a big thank you to Game Blazers for sponsoring today's video. And we are starting today's video with the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are 4-2 on the year, and relative to the buzz the Chiefs, Bills, and Dolphins all receive, I think the Ravens are very quiet contenders, as in they could win the AFC type of quiet contender. But going back to the title of today's video, what scares me with this team is playing down the teams they have no business losing to, and we've seen that in each of their two losses, in the loss to the Colts and the loss to the Steelers. And within the Steelers game specifically, they had drop after drop after drop and should not have lost that game. And this is what worries me with the Ravens and with these two losses in particular, is these two losses may have already done enough damage, especially when you factor in the rest of their schedule. In no order, the Ravens still have to play the Lions, Bengals, Seahawks, 49ers, Dolphins, Jags, and Chargers. Granted, the Bengals, Seahawks, Lions, and Dolphins are at home, and we can call it what it is, unless the Ravens have a mountain of injuries like they had down the stretch of both the 2021 and 2022 seasons, they're not going to lose all of these games. But, I would be very surprised if they win all of these games. And speaking out loud, I think the ceiling for this team is probably around 11 or 12 wins, which I do not think would be enough to get the number one seed, and with there only being one by now, that's obviously big, but in the AFC specifically, that's huge. And what's unfortunate for the Ravens is the receivers are letting down Lamar Jackson. Everyone likes to get their jokes in about Lamar and Lamar the running back, but if you haven't been paying attention, and I mean truly paying attention to the Ravens, I truly think Lamar Jackson is playing the best football of his career from a passing standpoint. He's been a great player for the Ravens this year, and Ravens fans, I know you guys know all about this, but Lamar has had 7.6% of his passes dropped this year, which ranks 8th in the NFL. But the kicker here, out of the 10 drops Lamar is credited with on PFF, or drop passes that is, 7 came in the Pittsburgh game alone. And even dating back to last year, there's times where the Ravens lose games that they flat out have no business losing, and in 2022 those games were to the Bills, Giants, and Jags for reference. We have discussed this over the past few weeks, but I really think they should make a splash move and trade for a big receiver before the trade deadline. The trade deadline is on Halloween, and we saw them do that last year with a pretty good player by the name of Roquan Smith. And in order to prevent losing games they shouldn't, and to bring a third Lombardi to the Charm City, they need to do that again. Because this team scares me when they get in games they have no business being in. Next up is the Kansas City Chiefs, and this is a very specific one because if they've proven anything over the past few years, it's that they're one of the best teams of this generation, and remember, they didn't accidentally win two Super Bowls in the past five years. 
But what worries me with this team is what if Travis Kelsey goes down? Travis is one of the best tight ends in the league and will be a Hall of Famer five years after he retires. And I know Travis has been in the news off the field over the past month and a half, and I think everyone in the world knows about that. But Travis's contributions to this offense are truly countless. And in the sense of the most valuable player award, I really think Travis Kelsey should be in this discussion. Obviously, he's not because it is a quarterback award. Also, I I feel the same way about Tyreek Hill of the Dolphins and everything we are going to say regarding Travis very much applies to Tyreek as well. And we know both Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones did not play in week one against the Lions. And as we know, the Chiefs lost this game. I don't want this conversation to be as simple as, oh, the Chiefs are undefeated with Kelsey and defeated without him. They need him. You get the point. But when it comes hell or high water, there's one player Patrick Mahomes looks to. And we see it all the time when watching Chiefs games. It's third and seven and they're running a zone bullets and Mahomes gets forced outside the pocket and just before the defender gets there, who does he find? Travis Kelsey who in the middle of this play went off script and changed his route and basically sat down in the middle of the field. But what scares me with the Chiefs offense outside of Travis is they don't have another reliable guy to throw the ball to. I know they just traded for McCole Hardman from the Jets to bring him back, but I don't really think McCole qualifies as a quote unquote reliable target. Outside of Kelsey, they have two guys with over 200 yards, and they are Rasheed Rice and Justin Watson. There is some buzz around Rasheed Rice potentially being a guy Mahomes looks to throw to down the stretch of the season, but he is a second-round rookie receiver, and is a second-round rookie receiver going to be able to carry an offense even with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback? I don't think so, and this is where I go back to the Lions game, and to be clear, I'm not focusing on the result of the Lions game, which was a loss. I'm focusing on how this offense looked without Travis Kelsey on the field. Patrick Mahomes was just 21 of 39 for 226 yards and two touchdowns, and yes, he did throw an interception in this game, which obviously wasn't his fault, but Mahomes did finish the game with a passer rating of just 77.5. The interception does bring the passer rating down, of course, but the point is the Chiefs didn't look anywhere close to the Chiefs without Travis Kelsey, and in a game where anything can change on a single play, or or hell, a single route in practice, or anything. A misstep that becomes a non-contact injury, and we all know what non-contact injuries mean most of the time, and the pit that forms in your stomach when you hear somebody had a non-contact injury. This is my biggest concern with the Chiefs. I know we can do this with every team because the Bills obviously wouldn't be the same without Josh Allen, but in the sense of a pass catcher and a guy who is a non-quarterback, maybe outside of Tyreek Hill and maybe Justin Jefferson, I don't know if there's a more valuable piece to any offense in the NFL than what Travis Kelsey is to the Chiefs. By the way, quick shout out to Steve Spagnolo as he has those boys playing phenomenal football on defense. But the thought of losing Travis scares me for the Kansas City Chiefs in a big, big way. Next up is those beloved Dallas Cowboys zen through six games. They are four and two in their season so far has been a roller coaster. They outscored both New York teams by a combined 70 to 10 through the first two games, then stunningly lost by double digits to the Cardinals, then embarrassed the Patriots with a 35 point win, then got embarrassed by the 49ers and most recently beat the Chargers on Monday Night Football in week six. Heading into the San Francisco game, I was excited for this team because I thought they were ready to to compete with the Eagles and 49ers at the NFC, and I did think they were going to lose in San Francisco, but I thought it was going to be something along the lines of 20 to 17. But since that game, and really the Arizona game for that matter, this team doesn't look the same as they did in weeks one and two, minus an absolute trouncing of Mac Jones and the Patriots. And my biggest fear for Dallas moving forward is their ability to play up to competition. I know people want to make this a Dak thing, and people are very quick to say Dak will never win a Super Bowl as if that's as easy as going to buy deli meat at your local grocery store. There's a reason winning a Super Bowl is hard as hell to begin with, and even in that Chargers game, yes, Dallas won, but they didn't look great. They didn't look like they were a team foaming at the mouth mad coming off of a 32-point pantsing on Sunday Night Football. Aside from CeeDee Lamb and Micah Parsons, this team doesn't look like they want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the league. And when they're up like they were in the New England game or either of the New York games, you see the energy flowing through the team and you see everybody eager to go and kick someone's ass. And that's been missing in three of the past four games. And I don't know how you get that back or how you say, all right, guys, let's go play Dallas Cowboys football. 
The reality with the 2023 Cowboys is they are a very talented team, and I'm not questioning that. They have what I would consider a few easier wins down the stretch, like the Giants and Panthers in back-to-back -back weeks, but the five-game span from weeks 13 through 17 is a very difficult stretch for anybody. I don't think they will go 0-5 per se, but playing Seattle, Philly, in Buffalo in December, followed by in Miami and home against Detroit is a gauntlet in itself right before the playoffs start. No win in that span is an easy win, and hell, they finished the year in Washington with a game against the Commanders. So this six-game stretch before the playoffs is almost a set of playoff games themselves, and their bye week is in week seven, the same time this video is releasing, and that's a long time to go without a break. And for them to have a playoff schedule before the playoff start is a tall order for anybody. And they're already a game behind Philly in the division, and I would be a little surprised if the Cowboys win the NFC East. I do think Philly will ultimately win the division, which would set up Dallas in a scenario like they had last year. They win 11 or 12 games, enter the postseason as a 5 seed, go kick the NFC South winner's ass, and lose in the divisional round to San Francisco or Philly. And if they play San Francisco again, there's no doubt the Week 5 game would be in their head before the playoff game would start. And as soon as something would go wrong, I think it would be a big trickle effect. And my biggest fear for the Cowboys moving forward is not playing up to the competition. Next up is the Buffalo Bills, and this is a team right now that's 4-2 and two and is top 3 in both points per game and points allowed per game, which may seem surprising given they only put up 14 against the Giants in Week 6, and that game really had you holding on to the edge of your seat even down to the final play. But my biggest concern with Buffalo moving forward, aside from injury, is Josh Allen being the down part of the roller coaster that is Josh Allen. There's plays Josh makes that will have your jaw drop, and there's plays plays he makes where there's a real chance he is the only quarterback to be able to make a specific play, but he will counter it with a game like he had in week one against the Jets, where there's times you legitimately have no idea what's going to happen the next time he throws the ball, good or bad. And he reminds me of Carson Wentz in that way when you get bad Josh. Obviously the good part of Josh Allen is present far far more than the bad part, but aside from the week one game against the Jets, the Bills looked bad offensively against the Giants and they were the first team in NFL history to win a game with fewer passing and rushing yards, more interceptions, more fumbles lost, and more missed field goals. And opponents prior to the Bills in week six were 0-134. Every team is prone to having a bad game and playing the Jags in London, despite it being a Buffalo home game, was extremely disadvantageous for Buffalo, but they have a span coming up where they need to win four of the next five in order to keep the pressure on Miami. They play in New England, home against Tampa in Cincinnati, which is going to be a tough game, home against Denver, and home against the Jets. They need to win at least four of these games, and this goes without being said, and this applies to Miami as much as it applies to Buffalo. If either team is going to the Super Bowl this year, either team has to win the AFC East. It starts with winning the division. I would be very, very surprised if we see a wildcard team win three straight, not just playoff games, but three straight road playoff games in the AFC. And that's no disrespect to either team, but heading into presumably Jacksonville, Baltimore, Kansas City, or the other team that wins the AFC East in three straight weeks is an almost impossible task. So for Buffalo down the stretch, and again, I'm keeping injuries out of this because the loss of Matt Milano is already huge, but the bad version of Josh Allen scares me. I will say that a lot of the wins the Bills have in the Josh Allen era have been by more than one score, and a fun fact, in 2021, all 11 of Buffalo's wins were by two scores, and three of their four wins in 2023 have been by 28 or more points, including a 48-20 win over the Dolphins. Miami's biggest fear would be losing Tyreek, which was very similar to the Travis Kelsey point with the Chiefs. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe, as only about 25% of people watching are subscribed, and it helps a ton. We recently hit 100,000 subscribers, and I truly, truly cannot thank you guys enough for the support. Thank you to Game Blazers for sponsoring today's video, and until next time, please be safe, and have a great day. Love you guys.